Hey everyone, I uh, just thought I'd do a video today about a bit of fire management when you're using an offset smoker. I get asked quite a few questions every week about it. So today I'll take you through my method and um, we'll do some beef short ribs while we're at it as well. But what I like to start with is just a good hot charcoal base, whether that's uh, lump charcoal or briquettes. You want to get them burning hot, then we'll dump them in the firebox and then we'll start adding some uh, split wood. Today we're going to be using some iron bark from Natural Smoke. You just want to build a nice, clean charcoal base and um, get that burning really clean. And then you can add your meat in and we'll get going. So I'll show you along the way and we'll get into it. So we've just got some beef short ribs from our local Drake's. Uh, we've just trimmed any silver skin off the top and taken the bottom membrane off. Beautiful quality there, as you can see, nice marbling. And we're just going to give them a nice coat in the uh, Heavenly Hell pistol powder and uh, we'll get them in the offset once it's ready. All right, so you can light your charcoal any way you want. I've just done it on the side burner of my gas barbecue. You can use fire lighters, whatever you want to do, but I've got about a three quarter chimney worth there. So once they're all nice and red hot, we'll dump them in the bottom and then we can start adding some splits. Another thing I'll do to show you is, is um, we'll go by our gauge temperature there. And then I've also set up the probe in there so we can see what the temperatures are doing at the great level uh, through our ink bird there. So we'll come back when we're ready to dump them in. All right, so that's burning nice and hot. So what I've done in preparation is I've opened up my smokestack and then I've cranked my side fire door as well. So we'll just dump these in. Put that down there for now. And then we can add a couple of our nice iron bark splits. And we'll start building that nice clean burning uh, coal base. So we'll come back in about 15, 20 minutes and see how it's going. So guys, another tip that I always use is you wanna rest your next split that you're gonna be putting in on top of the firebox. You wanna preheat that log so it catches fire almost instantly, if not very, very quickly. You don't want to be putting a cold log onto a hot fire, otherwise it's going to smolder it, give you dirty smoke, and then it's going to affect the flavour of your barbecue. You don't want that foul taste in your barbecue from dirty smoke, so make sure you do that as well. All right, so our temperatures are starting to stabilise. Got a bit of a difference between our gauge and our probe temperature. Got some nice clean smoke coming through. You're always going to get a difference in the gauge temperature to the grill temperature, just because they're in two different positions. The gauge is up higher and heat rises, so you're always going to get a higher reading from your gauge temperature. Getting a nice clean burning fire in there now. Got rid of all that dirty smoke from the uh, cold logs. So we're going to add our meat in and um, get going. Alright, so our meat is on. We dropped a bit of temperature when we opened the uh, lid to get it on. Some nice clear smoke coming through there. Like I said, you don't want that thick white smoke. You want nice thin blue smoke or clear smoke like that. So our temperature's coming back up nicely now. Going to aim to smoke them at about the 275 to 300 mark. If we see the temperatures climbing over 300, we'll shut our side firebox door and we'll keep an eye on it. If it's still climbing, then we'll slowly shut down our vents a little bit until it stabilizes. Uh, you don't want to panic and just shut everything down. Otherwise you'll get that thick white dirty smoke. It'll put a bad taste in whatever you're smoking. And um, after about the two hour mark, we'll spritz every time the ribs look a little bit dry on top. And we'll try and time it so we put a split in every time we need a spritz. Because uh, you don't want to be opening these doors too often and causing temperature drops or temperature spikes whenever you put a fresh log on. That's pretty normal. The yeah, temperature comes down pretty quick, so don't panic with that. So yeah, we'll uh, come back in an hour or two when we're ready to either put a fresh split on or we're ready to spritz. All right, so our temperatures started dropping a bit. It's been about an hour and a half. I'm assuming it's because our logs are starting to burn out, which they are. And so they're pretty much turning to ash. So we can put a fresh log in. And that should start catching fire pretty quick. Get another log ready. See a few flames starting to come about. So that's caught fire. Close the lid again. Put 
Got another log on top, ready to go. And uh, we'll just keep an eye on the uh, smokestack, make sure that smoke stays nice and clean. And um, we'll adjust our vents and close the door accordingly if uh, the temperature starts getting too hot. All right, so it's been another hour and a bit. We were sitting steady at about 300. Now I've noticed the temperature is starting to drop quite a bit. So I'm assuming that the uh, splits are starting to burn out in there. So we'll add them two logs in a sec. We'll have a look at the ribs. They're looking really nice. Give them a spritz. And then, you can see how quickly that temperature drops when you open the lid. And we'll have a look and see if I'm right in the firebox. Oh yeah, they're pretty well just burnt almost down to ash. So we'll add a couple of logs. They should catch fire pretty quick. So that little one's starting to catch fire now. There's a few flames starting to appear on that big one. So we'll close that. And um, yeah, we'll just leave it and see how it goes. But that's pretty much the process. It's just keeping an eye on temperatures, adjusting vents whenever you need to, and making sure you're not getting any dirty smoke. So like I said, if it's burning too hot, you can slowly shut down vents. Or if the logs aren't catching fire, open up your doors, crack your firebox door a little bit. And um, yeah, it's pretty well just a matter of keeping an eye on everything. They're a bit of work, the old offsets, as opposed to the uh, Kamados, but they produce some good barbecue. So we'll probably leave it at that and come back a bit later on when the ribs are done. I like to leave my ribs until they hit about 200 internal. And then I like to check them with the uh, instant read and then we'll probe them until they probe like butter. And then we'll wrap them, rest them for about an hour and then we'll slice and serve. All right, so our temps have been hovering around the 270 to 300 mark. I checked for tenderness at 195 and I wasn't quite happy. So we've just hit 200, so I'll check again. If I'm happy, we'll wrap them in foil and uh, rest them in the esky for an hour or two before we slice and serve. So they are looking bloody good. They are probing much better. No resistance with that thermometer, so I think we'll get them out, give them a rest, and uh, come back when they're ready to slice. Right, we are ready to slice. I've been resting for about an hour. So let's see how they go. Check that out. Wow, we incredible. Check out both sides of that one. See how juicy and everything they are inside there. Time to try a bit. Seriously, amazing. And if it drakes short ribs for like 14 bucks a kilo and to get that quality, unbelievable. Wow. That's so good. That heavenly held pistol powder. Absolutely unreal. Oh, they are just super tender. You're not going to beat that. 
for awesome quality. But anyways, it wasn't really about the beef ribs. It was about a little bit of fire management and um, how to master the offset. So I hope this video has helped you in regards to that. If you need to know anything else, feel free to uh, reach out and ask us any questions, but have a crack yourself. Hopefully it's answered a few questions that you've had or anything like that. So we'll see you next time and thanks for watching.